with our lesson today. We have uh, Saul's redemption on David's life. We've been studying, uh, as you've been following along, and it's in there poorly or whatever we've been studying <coughs> about the prophets and about the judges. And <coughs> it's been a good study in the Old Testament, but it's uh, we the last two or three, uh, well, the last five lessons looks like uh, just talking about uh, Saul and the anointing of Israel's king and all the things that was going on and <coughs> how Saul was was chosen by Samuel uh, <coughs> through the leadership of God. Uh, you know, they they decided, the Israelites decided, to, uh, <coughs> God decided that they wanted the king like all the other nations. And God decided he was going to give a king, but he was still, the king was still under his rule and reign. It wasn't just, you know, he wasn't just like all the other kings. He still had to answer to God, and, and uh, God was still in control, and is still in control. But we see here, as he went along, uh, God chose Saul, sent him, anointed him, and made him king, and things went along pretty good for a while. But Saul began to, uh, I'd say, well, uh, like a lot of us or like a lot of other people, when, when they get a position and when they get to where they uh, think they've got uh, rule total uh, over a situation, you know, they begin to buff up and get uh, kind of excited with themselves. <laughs> and that kind of happened to him, you know, and, and uh, he, he uh, didn't do as God had told him to. Uh, there was a time when they were out fighting uh, one of the uh, native nations around them and God told him to just completely destroy him. And he did. He kept uh, some of the stuff. He kept the king alive and brought him back to Jerusalem or uh, back to where his uh, uh, kingdom was or where his house was, his palace or whatever. And here God told him you know, that he had messed up, Samuel, he sent Samuel to him and let him talk to him about what he had done and <clears throat> the consequences of it. And things began to go downhill from there for Saul. You know, and he, uh, God told him to Samuel again that uh, he was going to pick out another king, that his rule was going to go on, that he, when he died, his kingdom would, and his rule would end. And we see that uh, Samuel went looking for another king for Israel. And he went and found David. And we know the story of David and, and how he was out, a shepherd boy out in the field. And Samuel went and asked the fellow if he had any, anybody. And he talked to all of his sons. And he said, do you have any more? And he said, yeah, I've got one. And he's out in the field working. So he went and talked to him and, and chose him and as as Israel's next king while he was still yet a young boy. And he went to live in the palace and learn the ins and outs and whatever. And as he grew and as he grew in stature, you know, and they called on him to be a champion for the, uh, the army. And he went and killed Goliath, as you know. And as he lived and as he grew and things, he began more popular and began more in statue and began to Serve and follow God and was blessed in about everything that he did, every way that he turned, you know, God was was merciful unto him. And <clears throat> so Saul, you know, all the time he was looking and trying his, you know, trying to <coughs> figure out some way to get rid of David. After a while he began to see how much more popular David was than he was. So he began to try to get rid of him. So <clears throat> here uh, we see uh, an episode. David had just come back from from fighting the Philistines in chapter in uh, 1 Samuel 19 and 8, and says, "And there was war again, and David went out and fought with the Philistines and slew them with a great with a great slaughter, and they fled from him." Here, uh, from, from the time that he killed Goliath. And all the things that was going on, like I said, God blessed him, and, and everything he went out to do was blessed. Every, every uh, uh, 
battle that he was in, all the stuff that he done, you know, and, and the way that he fought and the way he uh, uh, began to learn about how to lead and his leadership in the army, you know, it, it was blessed and it was good. And he says, and the evil spirit from the, uh, from the Lord upon, was upon Saul, he said, in his house, but his hand in his hand, and David played his hand. Here, when David would go out and fight, Saul didn't even go out and fight anymore. You know, he, he went out a time or two with David, and, and then when he came back, uh, the people, uh, as they went by, you know, they, they sang praises of Saul, you know, and they, they uh, one place that said there, they, uh, Saul has killed his thousands, and David has killed his ten thousands, you know. So they were, all the time, they were uh, raising David up above Saul. And it says here, an evil spirit was upon Saul. He, did, he, he got envious of David and was trying his best to get rid of him. He, he put snares in his way. He even uh, uh, gave uh, his daughter to David from, uh, for a while. And he figured out, you know, he, tried, he thought that she would be true to him instead of David and that would cause him problems. But uh, even that didn't work as we read on down. Uh, into the, uh, the uh, lesson today. And, and when David would go out and fight and whatever, and when all the, the spirit would come on Saul and he was uh, tore up and, and things were bad, and David would go in and play his lyre, you know. He, he, was, uh, he was a good musician. He, he could sing and whatever, and he would go in and entertain Saul, and this would help him and, and get him off of these uh, uh, depressed situations that he was in. And here he says, uh, he went in and, and David played with his hand and Saul sought to smite David even to the wall of the javelin. But he slipped away out of Saul's presence and he smote the javelin into the wall and David fled and escaped that night. Here we see that it had come down, he was, uh, for a long time he was trying to do things against David kind of on the sly, you know. Just a little bit here and a little bit there to disclaim him and, and to tear him down and whatever. But it got to the point that he actually wanted to kill him. He wanted to get done with him. That he was he was not going to uh, just uh, uh, play along anymore. And here, when David came in this time, Saul was sitting there with his gel in his hand, and David was playing and whatever. And evidently, uh, he threw it at David, and David uh, slipped around and. and got out. He was able to move and get away out of the, out of the way of the javelin. And he said he stuck it into the wall and David fled. You know, this was the ultimate trying to kill him. He was aiming to. And he was working on it. He'd been thinking about it a long time. You know, but here, as we see, David was, was uh, in one place a little bit later on, you see uh, written there that David was a man after God's own heart. You know, he wanted to do, and he, uh, and, and the most of his life, he did things according to the way God wanted them done. You know, that was his strong suit. You know, you can say what you want to about David, about him being a strong man and whatever, but when you, when you basically run it down, he was still in touch with God everywhere he went. You know, even from when he was a small boy, out in, out in the wilderness trying to keep the sheep and the animals and stuff and, and whatever God uh, uh, protecting him from the lions and the bears and all the stuff that was out there, you know. And uh, everything that he did, as I said before, everything that he turned his hand to prospered. You know, and uh, God was, uh, was, was blessing him as he traveled along. And here, <coughs> in, in this part, he got away from Saul. Saul carried it a little further, though, and he knew where he lived and said, Saul also sent messengers unto David's house to watch him and to slay him in the morning. And Mitchell, Matt, Mitchell, David's wife, got, told him, If thou slay not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain. She woke up, David, evidently some of Saul's uh, other folks had sent word to her that, that he was after David and he was going to kill him. You know, and he was forewarned. And here, you know, uh, God in, in his wisdom and whatever, he knew that uh, that Saul was on the way 
and he, he, he fixed it to where David could be warned and that he could get away. You know, a lot of folks say, well, I don't see why he just didn't stand by. God was, was uh, you know, was taking care of him and it, he wouldn't have been killed anyway. But you know, God's will sometimes allows for us to uh, take the path around something, you know, and let him work and let his glory be seen throughout his work. David could probably have killed everybody that come down there. Know that. But it wouldn't have been the way God planned for it to be. You know. God promised, or God let Saul know that his kingdom was good as long as he lived. <coughs> you know. And that he was going to be king. But, uh, and, 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 and Saul knew, as well as David, you know, that this was going to change. When, that, when Saul's life when he come right down to it, and he died, his kingdom wasn't going to travel long, but David would become king. So David wasn't worried about who he was going to have to fight against or whatever. You know, he he knew that uh, that the battle had already already been won, so he didn't have to fight. But anyway, his wife told him said <clears throat> uh, that these fellows was coming to slay him in the morning. She says, "If thou slay not thy life tonight, tomorrow thou shalt be slain." So Michael, Michael or whatever, let David down through a window and he, sent, and he went and fled and escaped. He got away, you know, before they got there. He didn't have to fight. You know, God has, like I said, God has a way of protecting us sometimes. You know, there's a lot of times that uh, where we go and what we do is is uh, led by God. You know, there's a lot of times we get up and, and uh, get to the what we think we need to do or what we uh, need to do or, or whatever and something gets in our way and we don't get to do it right at that time or, or something. You know, and I, I've often thought how much different it would be, you know, if, if we just was able to do things as we really wanted to, you know, and things really run even and really run easy, you know. <coughs> Sometimes uh, when we look back, uh, not being there was a better idea, you know. God had protected us in that way, you know. You know, there's a lot of, uh, sometimes they, we hear of uh, uh, things happening, shootings happening, and storms happening, and, and floods and whatever, you know. And uh, I have in my life experienced things happen, and I was just maybe two or three minutes behind, you know. And it, it, it didn't happen to me because I wasn't there. And the reason why I wasn't there was God's providence keeping me from that, you know, and keeping me out of that danger, you know. And things it's kind of runs close sometimes. You see, well, this uh, something, you know, and you just miss a wreck or you just do this, and you say, well, that fellow was really lucky. But when you leave thinking about it, God's looking after us, you know. It's like we see here that he was looking after David. He wasn't... Uh, it wasn't his will for him to be there. So he moved him, you know. And he was protecting him in that way. And, and it says, and, uh, Michelle took an image and laid it in the bed and put a pillow of goat's hair for, for his bolster and covered it with a cloth. And when Saul's messengers came to take David, she said, he is sick. She built a, a dummy. But in the bed, pretty much what that says, you know. She took a, uh, <coughs> I was reading over in the thing here, over in the uh, portal, and it talked about she might have been serving another god. You know, they was they had integrated some of the gods around and about Israel at this time, and, and uh, they some of them had statues bust about almost the side of a human person. And he said that she took this and laid it uh, in the bed and, and put the goat hair around it where it looked like a man's head sticking out. You know, so when they looked in there, they thought it was him. And <clears throat> Saul sent the messengers again to see David, saying, Bring him up to me in the, in the bed that I might slay him. Here, Saul has made the decree. He tried to kill him with a, with a, with a, with a uh, javelin. And he missed. But now he, he has revealed his ultimate plan when he threw the javelin. That removed all doubt of 
what he was aiming to do. So it wasn't that no use for him to come behind anymore. And he sent him back and said, come get him. If you're too sick to get out of the bed, just bring the bed on and I'll kill him in the bed. It makes no difference to me. I'm going to get rid of him. And when the messengers went and come to behold, there was an image in the bed and a pillow of goat's hair for his bolster. Like I said, she fixed the dummy. Hey, while they was running back and forth and, and going back and forth to you know, spend the messages back, this was giving David time to get away all the time, you know. She was working it really well. God, in, in his wisdom, like I say, has, was protecting him and looking after him. And Saul said uh, to, to Michelle, why hast thou deceived me so and sent away my enemy that he is escaped? And Michelle answered Saul. He said unto me, let me go. Uh, why should I? Uh, why? Uh, why should I kill thee? Here she told Saul in order to save her life. <coughs> now she was she was uh, uh, true to her husband, looking after him and taking care of him. You know, and she had left her father's house and, and was no longer uh, uh, attached to him as far as uh, she had to choose between her husband and her father. So she chose her husband, and she said, "He promised." He said, "If you, if you don't do this, I'll kill you." You know, she she told him, her daddy said he was able to kill me if I didn't help him get away. So here we see that Saul's plan was thwarted. Every way that he turned, it didn't make any difference. Uh, every way that he planned, all the things that he done, and that this wasn't his last attempt to try to kill him. You know, he tried he tried it other ways. Uh, to uh, get rid of him, try to get other people to kill him uh, up until his, up until he died. You know, but we see here that that uh, God in His infinite wisdom makes no difference who the person is. We've seen this several times in other in other portions of Scripture, and seen in uh, uh, in our lives, like I say, several times that we have been able to uh, experience. God's grace, His love, and protection in our own life. You know, there are several times in my life that that uh, uh, I have been and have uh, got through uh, pretty bad incidents or whatever, and, and never uh, not really hurt bad. You know, had a heart attack, and and, and in two, a couple of months was back. You know, wasn't doing exactly what I've been doing, but. But it's working and doing it again, you know. God looks after us and takes care of us, you know. And here we see this even uh, even from the time that, that David was a small boy. God looked and chose him for his king and made him a promise. See, there was a promise here that that has been made that his kingdom will be, will be forever. And we look back and see. <clears throat> Greg, uh, uh, Preacher Greg preached uh, a whole line of messages on that red scarlet string or that scarlet line that went from Rahab all the way through. You know, these people were uh, uh, together and followed this red uh, blood string, this red string uh, uh, that connected all these people. You know, Rahab let, uh, let the spies down through a window. Several other people had escaped something through a window. David escaped through a window, you know. And God, like I say, has, has, and has proved or has said that his reign will, and his rule uh, will go forever. And it, it travels right along. And when you start looking at who David was kin to and, and around about, it comes right up to uh, being akin to. Uh, Christ was kin to him, see, in the, in the line of David. So his reign is still going on. And Christ is the ultimate king. You know. And, and it, as, as, as has been said, it has been documented, you read it and study it. And his lineage is true. And it comes right on down uh, to Christ's family and to his uh, uh, lineage. And we see here that uh, God has taken care of it. And when it comes time, you know, for, for a person to leave God, uh, uh, calls them home. You know, uh, any other time up until then, 
Uh, nobody will let him know. When Christ was here, you know, he he, he come and preached and had his ministry and whatever. And he was he was out there preaching for three years, a uh, uh, bigger part uh, of that time. And all that time, they were trying to kill him. You know, they were looking some way to get rid of him. Didn't make no difference. They were looking to get rid of him, but they couldn't do anything with him till it came time. God is always, always has, always can, and always will be able to take care of his people. We look around and think, like, well, uh, this virus and stuff that was here. I hear a uh, fellow talking this morning, you know, uh, about this virus and the things that are happening around and about, and, and he likened the Christian people of today. Uh, uh, to the Israelite people in uh, uh, in Egypt, when all the plagues and stuff was going on around and about them, you know, they lived in a place called Goshen. There wasn't any of this stuff going on in there. You know, they were protected. God's people were protected. There wasn't no frogs. There wasn't no darkness. You know, everything and where they was living was good. They had good drinking water. It wasn't dark. The locusts didn't bother them. The plagues didn't bother them. And when it come right down to it, the ultimate plague was the death. They were able to put the blood on the doorposts. And they were protected, you see. This is not just this story. You know, it's been running a long time, ever since God spoke the earth into existence. Ever since he put Adam and Eve here. God has a plan. And it always works. He has a protective plan that he takes care of and looks after his people. He promised when Christ was here that the ones that believed on him would never perish. He's going to look after them, take care of them. Christian people, even if they die, they're still taken care of. We see this as as we look back and study the time. The Jewish aspect of this, I like to read this, and, and uh, we were close with this, but I, I like to read this Jewish as aspect of it. It shows how this run through uh, uh, the, the Jewish people. Moses knew the time would come when the Israelite people would desire a human king. In Deuteronomy 17, 14 through 15, he gave the nation instruction concerning their future king. The instruction included regulations that forbade the accumulating of large stables and horses, of taking too many wives, and of accumulating large amounts of silver and gold. The instructions directed them to stay true to God's commandments. In Samuel's lifetime, the fulfillment of Deuteronomy 17 came, came to fruition through the man Saul. Although the people asked for a king like all the nations, Israelite king was supposed to be a model for the rest of the nations to emulate and was not to be like kings of other nations. Israel king was to have real power and tremendous responsibility so that the other nations would emulate him as a leader and scholar admiring him for his uh, piousness, righteousness, and the fact that he feared God. History, <clears throat> let's see, he was to be morally higher than those around him. God held him to higher standards than other people and placed higher consequences on his indiscretions. Saul became the first to enter the difficult position of King of Israel, although the Talmud clarified that Saul was, was head and shoulders above everyone physically. Some scholars believe that he was also head and shoulders over everyone morally and ethically. Yet Saul had several flaws that characterized his uh, that characterized his reign. This week's lesson paints an unpleasant picture of Israel's first king, overcome by a, a tormenting spirit. Saul tried to kill David with a spear. When he failed, he sent troops to murder him. The Bible portrays Saul's life as full of disobedience and bad choices. 
Perhaps one of the biggest mistakes was they refused to obey God's command completely. For example, God declared that Saul was to select, so select was to settle accounts with the nation of Amalek uh, by completely destroying the entire nation. Saul slaughtered the uh, Amalekites but captured Aga, the king, and spared his life. Although Samuel later <coughs> later killed Aga, Saul's incomplete obedience to God command, God's command has severe re repercussions. The Bible tells us that David later had to fight the Am Amalekites. Not only did Saul's disobedience affect his, na his nation following his reign, but centuries later, his disobedience may still have been, effect been affecting the people. The Bible re records that the uh, villain Haman, H-A-M-A-N, who appears in the book of Esther, was an Agadite, possibly meaning that he was the descendant of King Agai. Uh, Haman attempted to uh, annihilate the Jews in Persia. In the story of Esther, Haman tricked the Persian king into issuing the command that all the Jews in the kingdom be killed. Esther, the king's, the king's Jewish wife, had to make a difficult decision that placed her in life in, in a life jeopardy position. In an act of immense bravery and obedience, Esther pleaded. Her case to the king. Her courage saved the lives of Jews while Haman and his sons were executed. Some rabbis trace Esther and her cousin Mordecai image back to King Saul. Certainly, <coughs> whatever we think of, what, of that, we whatever we think of of that, we can appreciate the. the principle of delaying or turning from past sins into genuine repentance. As Christians, we need to obey God carefully and pray that He will give us the power to generally, to genuinely repent from sins we commit. Here we see, as I was talking there a while ago about this lineage and about this line that traveled, you know, this bloodline that God set up. It has traveled his 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 repenting uh, ability to let us repent his uh, sacrifice uh, to enable us, you know, to come back into uh, repentance and into communion with him. You know, he fixed all this. You know, and it worked out. You know, and he, he, a lot of folks say, "Well, Old Testament's just history or whatever." But it shows us, you know, that uh, we as people, it don't make any difference if it's 2010 or if it's 1900 or if it's 500 BC. People are hard headed, you know, and they don't believe God's word. I mean, they just don't. And here, you know, He gave His people, He used them, He chose them as His people. He used them as an example of following him and having a good life. You know, when the, when his people from, and, and when uh, even in Genesis, when Adam and Eve done what he said, they had they had it perfect. I mean, they didn't have just a good life; they had it perfect. The sin destroyed them. It all it runs down a little further, you know. And when he began to work with the people. And begin to uh, show himself through the Bible and through the writers, you know, uh, he began to show that it's better to obey than it is to ask forgiveness. You know, it's better to obey. Things work better. He likes the people to obey. He takes care of them if they will. You know, we see this throughout several writings. And, and all this, you know, is, is for uh, uh, an example to us, you know. It's better to obey. Things work better if you do it his way. Anyone else got anything to say about uh, the lesson today? Appreciate y'all coming out. Uh,